A few hours ago, I told a Hungarian person not to use a microphone <laughs> if there are fewer than a hundred people. <laughs> I was talking about like giving speeches in quiet places, not in pubs where people drink. <laughs> you did a good job. A few hours ago, I told a very good friend of mine that I'm stopping drinking for six months. <laughs> now he's just gone and said he's got a new friend. <laughs> but you know, dr drinking. I, I have stopped drinking for six months. So I've, hold on, I've started stopping drinking for six months. It's been a week. It's been a week so far. I've gone through Christmas. That was great. It was a sober Christmas. It was scary. <laughs> but. Uh, but, I don't know, I think, but, but has everyone got a drink with you? You got a drink? Yeah. Yeah. Got a drink? Yeah, clap. Got a drink? Yeah. I have a drink. I think what we need to do is we need to reflect a little bit about drinking. And, and, and one of the reasons I brought myself to this conclusion that I should stop for six months is because I look back at my drinking history. A very long history. A very long history which began when I was, when I was 13. When I was 13, it just started with beer, English beer, not very strong. But then, you know, it moved on to stronger beers. Like in England, we got Stellar Artois, which is like kind of the same strength as Polish beer, so it's Stellar Artois. And then maybe whiskey mixed with something, whiskey with, with uh, Coca-Cola, for example, whiskey with anything with water. Uh, and, and then just whiskey, there, there wasn't any water, just whiskey, and then there was vodka, and, and then there was vomiting. There was waking up and vomit. But you know what? That was a great first night of drinking. <laughs> but anyway, one of the things about not drinking is you can start talking about crazy shit and people aren't gonna say, don't, don't worry about him, he's just drunk. Because I've always kind of been into UFOs. And... <laughs> Like, sitting around the, like, in the pub, like, you know, with another huge glass of whiskey and say, oh man, but dude, like, just what, imagine it from another dimension. And, and your friends going, okay, man, Andy, man, you've, you've, had, you've had too much. <laughs> now, there's not that excuse. I can talk about UFOs, and maybe you saw, in fact, in Polish news, it wasn't really there, but there was, they were released some videos of UFOs, which are, I'm not crazy yet, like, because they are unidentified flying objects in so much as they have not been identified. They're not necessarily from another dimension. They're not necessarily from another planet. Who knows what they are? But if you start reading on the internet what people say about them, it's kind of weird because when, uh, when I was younger and about UFOs, there was like, you know, people were talking about their experiences and there were like documentaries and people being abducted by aliens very often somewhere in the United States, but that's another story which American friends can explain to us. But anyway, people have been abducted and so on, and people are saying, we don't believe you, where's the evidence? Where's the proof? Where's the films? We haven't seen any films. Now everyone's got cameras and stuff, and they released pictures of UFOs from, from like uh, American airplanes and, and the Department of Defense, the United States Department of Defense, didn't say it's it's not true. But like they said, yeah, okay, yeah, these these are videos of UFOs. Now people are saying, yeah, but they're fake. Now we got the video evidence. They're not true. It's not true. Like it can't be true. Like like give us the proper written evidence. So like there's a kind of a mismatch going on. Like now we've actually got videos of well, literally UFOs. We don't know what they are, but they're faked, and that's to do with fake alien invasions and so on. I'm really looking forward to having very sober conversations about UFOs and shit. Like, uh, you have been warned, stay away from me for the next six months, and then in six months' time, I'll just be like, blurbing it out anyway. But coming, coming back to the abductions, I mean, I kind of, I'm fascinated by this, because uh, if you know about UFOs, even if you haven't studied it or anything, you know, like, apparently they come down and they do things to cows in America, and like they, they, they kind of take out the cow's penis and they suck the blood out and take out of his eyes and take his brain and then just leave the rest of it there. And there is evidence of the cows lying there and so on. Uh, but then there are people who are also abducted and sometimes they, they go to another dimension and they're speaking with people, like, well not people, with the aliens and 
they're talking about their future and they come back and they're very, very changed. And those are the nice aliens. I, I can't remember, right? But I think those are the gray ones or something. Like I'm, I'm, The gray aliens are nice. But then the, the other ones, and I don't really remember, I could just say anything because somebody probably on the internet said it. So there's the blue ones, which look kind of like wolves or something, and they abduct people as well. But they do experiments. And some of the experiments are horrific because alien abductees have been telling these things for many times. The aliens use anal probes. They probe humans' anuses. Nobody really knows why they're probing their anuses, but this is what they do on spaceships. They come millions of light years away to ram a piece of metal. Up Americans, <laughs> up Americans' asses. <laughs> but I know why. I know why. I've been doing my research in, like, when I was drunk and when I'm, well, since I've been sober, I've been doing my research into anal probing. And I have. How did it feel? <laughs> It, there was a cold, hard truth that I had to face. In theory and in practice, I've been doing my research into anal probing. And like, let's just think about it, because like people say the first big broadcast that went out into space, it was something like Adolf Hitler in the 1930s, like that and stuff, and, like, and it kind of goes off. And in the movie Contact, for example, that's the first stuff that the aliens pick up and they think, wow, they're crazy, let's go check them out, what they're doing. But then since then, just think about all of the broadcasts that we send out into the cosmos. And also, just think about it, maybe they can somehow, they've got like a, an incredible internet connection and they're kind of seeing our internet. And they're trying to analyze, what, who are these people? Who, what, what are these animals like on this planet? Like, and, and this is how they're communicating. So hold on, we're, we're on anal probing here, remember. Hitler? No, no, no. Like, uh, anal probing. But I don't know, I don't know. The Untold Histories, the History Channel. <laughs> uh, anyway, if we make the assumption that 90% of, por like of uh, the stuff on the internet is basically porn, right? When they are anally probing the Americans, they're just trying to be friendly because because they've seen that so much, right, on the internet. They just think that somehow, like that, that that's a way of making friends, and like, and, and people seem to be enjoying it, like with the, the like the internet stuff. So I'm told the internet stuff, like uh, like the anal probing. So any American friends out there, please do not worry. Trust me, if. Or when, <laughs> when, when you are abducted by the by the blue wolf ones or whatever, and they take you to the spaceship and they get out the big plug, they're just trying to be friends. 